Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. Today, the results are finally in for the MCX fan vote this year. And to nobody's surprise, The Flood have won. The Flood are coming back to Halo Mega Constructs and they're gonna be new articulation combat forms. Plus what I hope are gonna be some more surprises. But yes, The Flood are returning. You guys got what you wanted by an alarmingly large amount. <laughs> 6,608 people voted for The Flood and you know, that's not the result I wanted, but I am delighted for the community. Like you guys really did campaign for the flood. I know there's a lot of people, a lot of my friends that are particularly happy with this. Some people not so happy, but at the end of the day, when you do a vote, three out of four of the people who choose, you know, aren't gonna be satisfied. I know it's like a larger majority chose the flood, but there's still obviously gonna be people that chose the other three. I was Team Warden's challenge from the very beginning and through to the bitter end. I didn't want to go online and try and sway people's votes too much. I did an analysis video where I talked about the four options. I made it clear that I wanted Warden's challenge to win, but I made sure to stay away from social media. You know, I don't want to influence the decision too much. I don't want to make the vote bias. So I distanced myself from it and I just let it play out. And would you look at that, Traxxas Tower Flood won. To, again, absolutely nobody's surprise. Like I knew from the very beginning that the Flood would win. People know what they like, you know, and uh, a lot of people are Team Flood out there. So today we're gonna go through the results and talk about my speculation for the set, things that Mega have said about the set and others, and just in general talk about the MCX fan vote because it was a wonderful event. Mega produced this one way better than the first MCX fan vote. The thing I liked the most was the amount of votes and the percentage of votes per category or per set were hidden. So nobody knew which was winning until the very end. Everybody knew in their hearts it was the flood, but nobody really knew. I think with the first MCX fan vote, the Haunted Helmet was winning from the beginning. So people just kept on voting for the one that was winning. And I think that was a little bit biased. At the same time, you know, the original MCX fan vote. Well, how far back do you want to go, fellas? There was a MCX fan vote at Halo Fest back in 2010, I believe it was. And that was a vote for a new large set. The countdown ended up winning, but the other two contestants were a four on a structure and the spirit dropship. The Spirit Dropship was eventually released as a signature build. The Forerunner Structure kind of eventually became Cauldron Clash and the Sabre became the Countdown set, which is always one of the top sets ever made, right? Like I love that one so much. But then again, the voting for that set was only available at the event. So people online couldn't vote. Mega, to be honest with you, have been pretty closed off with their design processes, really engaging with the community for what the community want. Aside from the Mega Unbox website, they have been pretty quiet over the last few years. That is changing very quickly. Mega have been pulling out all the stops time and time again over the last few months to show that they are very community driven this year. I'm all about it. Like it's great for this channel. It's great for the community. I want the engagement with Mega and the people of the community to be hand in hand. And I think they are going forward with that. So the first MCX fan vote was last year that was hosted by Halo Podcast Evolves YouTube channel. That was voting for a figure to be produced in Halo Heroes Series 16. The options were Haunted Helmet, Thrall Slayer from Halo Wars 1, a Flood Combat form or a Halo 3 CQB. Well, the choices were good. I think they were too random. The Flood returning versus a Haunted Helmet versus just a random Spartan from Halo 3 versus a actual named character from Halo Wars 1. And some would argue that made the contest more enjoyable. I think Mega did it better with this one where they revealed sketches for four proposed sets all at the exact same price point and all kind of different, but at the same time, every one of them had named characters in, every one of them had brand new molds. Mega were very, very transparent on why they chose these four sketches. And I think it just worked out really well in the end. So we've got the four choices. You wanna see Cougar, Banished Reaver, the Traxxas Tower Flood, or Warden's Challenge. There were pros and cons to each one. The UNSC Cobra was going to come with a Professor Anders, which we've never seen before, and possible insurrectionists. Plus it was a very unknown vehicle from Halo Wars 1, which was pretty cool. The Banished Reaver was my second choice. You know, it came with two Halo Wars 2 characters, and that is a pretty dope thing. It also came with the Reaver, which I don't think we'll ever see again. And people of the community are always like, oh, I want more and more Banished sets, which I do understand. Then the Traxxas Tower Flood, obviously a 
incredible choice. We do have the new articulation flood combat form. And then I was particularly thinking that the set was a little wasted on just like a forklift. Mega didn't confirm the forklift. They said the set might include a legendary vehicle. But there is a forklift in the background of one of the pictures. So I assume that's what they were going for. I, I know, I, I like, I contradict myself because I always am pro diorama set pieces like structures. I love the original Floodgate. I love Assault on High Ground, Snowbound, Battlescape. Like they are all really dope. So the Traxxas Tower did make sense to me. I just kind of, I don't know, man. Maybe it's because I'm an old collector. I have like at least 50 or 60 floods. So I don't really need a new articulation one. Like it's not the top of my agenda. But now it's one, I am very happy about it. And the last one is the Warden's Challenge, which I was voting for because A, I really would like a Halo 5 Cortana mold and B, that Warden would just be so dope. I think it didn't get enough votes because people are a little skeptical of buildable figures. They just want like, proper molded figures like the die deck. But at the same time, I think it would have been a really exceptional set. And Mega said if it was produced, it might've included additional bonuses, which I think might've been a Promethean Knight. So we might've lost out on that one, but Traxxas Tower Flood won. So the Banished Reaver got 12% of the vote, UNSC Cougar 17%, Warden Challenge 18%, Traxxas Tower Flood 53%. Like the choice was obvious, so alarmingly large, like crazy, almost half of the vote, almost like all of the other three combined. The Banished Reaver was one and a half thousand votes, that's fourth place. The UNSC Cougar, 2,100 votes, that's third place. The Warden's Challenge, second place with 2,200 votes. And the Flood Tower with 6,600 votes. Pretty much three times the second place Warden's Challenge. I can only be happy for the community. You clearly got what you want if it's 6,600 people wanting new articulation Flood. I at least respect Mega that every set had big pros. You know, Professor Anders figure, two Banish leaders from Halo Wars Awakening the Nightmare, a new Warden Eternal and Halo 5 Cortana. Clearly very good choices. Mega, if you're listening to this, please consider making the Warden's Challenge as a future set. Please just consider it. I know you're making the Ghosts of Requiem set, so I know you're into making Halo 4 or 5 sets, so please use Halo Universe to go back and make Warden's Challenge. I know that it's like not won the fan vote, but here's the thing. Mega confirmed the other day that they have finalized Halo Heroes Series 17 and they are working on Series 18 right now. These things come out every six months. So Series 18 will come out in fall 2023. This set, the Traxxas Tower Flood, will come out in fall 2023. So I definitely predict that we will get a new articulation flood combat form in Halo Heroes Series 18, which means that was originally part of the fan vote, so I'm saying just even though we've done the fan vote, please consider making Warden's Challenge in the future. That would be a really dope set. So yes, the Traxxas Tower Flood will come out in fall 2023. And Mega did confirm on a Q&A on Instagram that they would consider using the Flood Combat form in future sets if it wins the fan vote. And it did. So I think we will get a, quite a few Flood sets in fall of 2023. That's pretty likely. Either that, or we just get the Traxxas Tower Flood, maybe also a Blind Bag Flood or a Halo Heroes Flood in fall of 2023. Spring of 2024 might be a massive flood line, which the way Halo Infinite's going, we might have a flood campaign at some point and it might just tie in really nicely for Mega. Interesting piece for you. Kev on the Squad 45 Discord said, would you ever consider doing crowdfunded projects similar to the HasLab Razor Crest from Hasbro? And Yan MCX, who works for Mattel Toys, said, you can think of the fan vote as a small step in the direction of crowdfunding. It's something we are exploring, but we don't want to rush into it and have it not be a success. And that's just really great to hear. It sounds like the MCX fan vote will be a mainstay thing in the future, which I'm all about. Like Mega have clearly opened up the floodgates here, the floodgates, nice. And they, I think they'll do a lot more of these fan votes in the future. I got a couple more pieces of information for you today. Loads from Kevin and Yan and MCX. They answered a load of questions again on the Squad 45 Discord and on Instagram. I've compiled a few here that I want to talk about, but the majority of them are in a previous video, which you can check down below. It's yesterday's video. So they've been talking about a lot of stuff. First of all, the stockpile and zone control helmets will release alongside the Fiesta helmet in the spring line. So those three helmets will be in store really soon. Very exciting stuff. They've confirmed that the new red team 
Warthog and the Scorpion will be the exact same metallic green as the Pelican Inbound, the Warthog, the Mongoose, everything that's been in the Infinite line so far. Really great news for me. They've confirmed that the Ghosts of Requiem will be $15, the ODST Hive Exterminators $20, and the Red Team Warthog $30. These are really affordable price points. I'm very happy with those. Like the Ghosts of Requiem, those four figures for $15 with that brand new Ghost. Oh, so good. It's so good. They've confirmed the Elephant is not a signature series set, but it definitely feels like one with the piece count. And Red Team Charge is metallic green. The Spartan Haunted is olive green, the same as the Master Chief from the Warthog Rally and Pelican Inbound. There are no new molds on the ODST helmet. The sets do have a new mold though. It will include three copies of the iconic ODST backpack. Very nice. The last thing I wanted to share with you today, Yan MCX actually said, Mega have thought about offering 3D printing as an option for discontinued figures and weapons. They haven't found the right way to make it happen yet, but it's interesting. Please do that. That sounds amazing. I would love that so much. I've been blown away by Mega's commitment to the community the last month. I think it really needs to be stated online. If you wanna do something cool for the community right now, go to Instagram, go to Twitter, go to Discord, praise Mega for the community engagement right now. We had a live stream where they revealed the full 2022 line. That's way better than it just getting leaked at an event or coming from Toy Fair. They did it properly. And they even had Gabe, G Customs Creation, on that live stream, like he's a legend. They've been really engaging with myself on my channel and loads of others. And I'm just really excited for what the future holds with Mega. So let them know guys, they are doing a really good job right now. And let me know in the comments down below if you are excited for Traxxas Tower Flood. Clearly three times more than the second place voted for this. So I think a lot of people are gonna be very happy. I know there were people that wanted other sets, but Mega is clearly opening up ears of communication to the community. And if you want to make your voice heard, you can tell Mega online what you would like to see in the future. And I think right now there's a good chance they'll listen. So you stay awesome, you stay safe out there, folks. This was another video with the domain. If you enjoyed this kind of news content, please do make sure to like and comment down below. I don't like asking for likes or comments, but apparently that that is just the way YouTube works. I don't like it and YouTube could do a lot more to support their creators. This was The Domain, signing off.